Hey everyone, Gentry Stein here. It's May 1st and we're back with another episode of Learn to Yo-Yo. In this one, we're gonna learn how to wind our yo-yos in a much cooler and faster way, as well as we're gonna look into how to wind our unresponsive yo-yos. Now, if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, check my last video where I break down all the yo-yos that I recommend, talk about what unresponsive yo-yos are, and where I also talk about the Yo-Yo Master Pack, which is what I recommend for anyone wanting to get into yo-yo. You guys can pick up a Yo-Yo Master Pack and some other great yo-yos on my website, gentrystein.com. It'll be the first link in the description. First, let's talk about winding our yo-yo in a faster way. So, if you guys have been practicing, You've probably run into the situation where your yo-yo stops and we have to grab the string, wind it up slowly, make sure it catches on the inside and continue to do this and it can get really monotonous, it can get kind of annoying sometimes. So if you guys have seen in some of my videos, I actually wind the yo-yo up quickly just like that. And if you know how to do this, it's really fun and not only does it look cool, but it's also really efficient so you don't have to keep winding your yo-yo over and over again. Instead, you could just do a quick flashy wind and you're good to go to get back to your tricks. Now, there's a few different ways to do this. First, I'll show you the way I prefer and then I'll show you another common way that people do it. So, if our yo-yo is at the bottom of the string here, again, we wanna make sure our strings are not too long. So, usually what I recommend is if the yo-yo is resting on the ground, that the string is no longer than up to your elbow. So, the yo-yo is at the end of the string here and we just wanna let it chill at the bottom. From there, we're gonna put our fingers around each side of the string, so just like this. And from here, we're gonna bring both of our fingers down to each side of the yo-yo. So if you look a little closer here, you can see that my pointer finger is on one side of the yo-yo and my middle finger is on the other side with the string in between. From here, what you're gonna do is just tighten the string all the way. So you wanna pull down on the yo-yo and pull up with your hand. And that's gonna create a lot of tension between the string here. So I'm pulling the string really tight with my fingers on each side of the yo-yo. And from there, we're just gonna force the yo-yo to spin by pulling our hand down and letting the yo-yo flick off the ends of our fingers. Now, it's gonna look just like this if we can get it right. But when you first try it, it's probably not gonna look like that. It does take a lot of practice. If it looks like this for you guys, and you can't get much of a spin going there. That just means that you weren't pulling it quite hard enough. So you really want to get the yo-yo to flick off the ends of your fingers. And you can see this time, I flicked it and it's spinning well, but it didn't come back up to my hand. So from that point, we can tug it back up and create a little bit more of a spin there and keep trying until we can get it up to our hand. But ultimately, you want to keep practicing it so that way you can pull really hard and then get it to come all the way back to your hand. You can see I didn't catch it that time. And so what we wanna to do to catch it is actually flip our hand over. So we create the tension here, flick the yo-yo up, and as it's winding almost to our hand, we wanna flip our hand over like this and let it continue to wind up all the way to our hand. Sometimes this way doesn't really work for everyone. And I notice a lot of people tend to, instead of use their pointer finger and middle finger, like to use their thumb. I have a much harder time this way. I can't seem to get as hard of a flick going there. But for you, maybe it might work better. So if you are having trouble doing it this way with your pointer finger and middle finger on each side, you can try it with your thumb instead and you may have an easier time. So you can see it works just as well there. Um, but it really comes down to whatever your preference is. So once you guys get this down, you can try a couple variations of it where it actually becomes more of a trick. So let's try to do it from behind our back. So this time, we want to put the yo-yo behind our back. Because our opposite hand's locked up behind our back like this, it's going to take more power from our throw hand. So whatever hand's on top that the string is attached to. So again, we're going to pull hard with this throw hand. And same thing flip it back all the way to the hand. All right, so now that you guys know how to wind your responsive yo-yos up a lot faster, let's talk about how to wind our unresponsive yo-yos. Now, if you guys have already got the yo-yo master pack and you're working with the unresponsive yo-yo, you may find that as you try to wind the yo-yo, it just keeps wrapping around in a circle like this. And again, that's because the yo-yo barely has any friction on the inside because this gap is so wide. And again, if you don't know what unresponsive yo-yos are, check back to my last video where I talk all about them and from that point, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So to address the problem where we can't get our unresponsive yo-yo to wind up, what we wanna do is grab the yo-yo with our opposite hand just on one side like this. So we don't wanna to touch both. We wanna just grab it on the opposite side. And then from here, we're gonna to go to wind the yo-yo in the same way, but instead of just trying to wind it like this, what we wanna do is put our opposite pointer finger right above the other side of the yo-yo. So you don't wanna to touch the yo-yo there. You just wanna put the finger right above it, so about a millimeter gap there. 
And from there, you're just gonna wind the string around that finger and around the yo-yo. And from there, you just wanna bring the string in between your finger and the yo-yo five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Again, so what we're gonna do is wrap it around our finger, a small gap with our finger and the yo-yo, and then bring the string right between the finger and the yo-yo as we're winding it five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Now from this point, we wanna be careful not to pull the string too tight, but we're gonna let go of this loop and continue to wind it. Again, don't pull it too tight or it's gonna do this. Continue to wind it, two, three, four, five, and you'll feel that now the string's winding around itself. And before you know it, just keep winding and the yo-yo's back to your hand. So in the same way that we wound our responsive yo-yo up faster, we can do that same thing with the unresponsive yo-yo, but it's just gonna be slightly different because now a bind is gonna be involved. Again, if you don't know what a bind is, you gotta go refer to that video. But for those of you that do know what the bind is from that last video, we're gonna do the same thing here. But now when we do this, when we're flicking the yo-yo down, we're actually making the yo-yo spin backwards. So the bind is not gonna work the same way. Instead, we're gonna have to bind backwards. So the way we're gonna do that, get the yo-yo spinning, instead of bringing our finger around to the front, we actually just wanna push our finger straight into the string and bring it to here this way. Then we do the same thing, pinch the loop, and pull that hand straight up. And because the yo-yo's not spinning quite as fast, it's gonna take a little bit more force with the bind. So now, we get the yo-yo spinning, we might have to make this loop a little bit bigger here. So instead of having our hands even here, we can just make this loop a little bit bigger so that when we pinch, we can pull our hand up more, and that's gonna create more of a snag so that way the yo-yo can wind up all the way. So again, let's show that one more time here. Instead of bringing the finger around to bind this way, we're gonna push our finger straight into the string, bind backwards, make the loop a little bit bigger this time, and then follow the same steps by pinching and pulling up the throw hand. And before you know it, guys, you'll be able to nail that. I hope you guys enjoyed learning that. It's gonna make your practicing a lot smoother, so have fun, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you.